uh, I, I said that we had talked some about what's going on in Israel, and I, I, it's this dilemma that I have inside myself of saying, um, I, how much should we talk about it? You know, what is right? I don't want to neglect the study of God's Word, but at the same time, I think I, there is a responsibility that, that we would have to keep the church informed and talking about what's going on in it before us. Um, and there's some that would ask me questions such as, uh, Josh, do you think that this is uh, some of the prophetic passages inside of Scripture that are coming to f be fulfilled? And I can tell you, beyond a shadow of doubt, the players are all right. I mean, uh, Russia and Turkey and Iran, which is Persia, when you read it in Scripture, Bob told me this week that Persia, they were actually Persia up until 1935. In 1935 is whenever it changed to Iran. I didn't, I didn't, I thought it's been Iran forever. And he's like, no, it was up. So it wasn't that long ago that what you read in Scripture where it says Persia was Iran, and I've always had that connection. I just didn't know it was that recent that it changed. And somebody uh, today, actually today I, I walked across, I went to eat, and I was eating lunch, and uh, before, as I was praying over my meal, uh, I was just like, Lord, just please don't let me be deceived. Your word says, uh, be sure that you're not deceived. And I don't want to be deceived about everything that's going on. And it's real easy to get swept to one side or the other of this. And I just, I just don't want to do that. But somebody asked me today, they said, um, do I really... Do I really think that this is truly that we're right at the end of, of time, if you will, the rapture of the church, the second coming of Christ, however you want to declare it? And um, this person asked me this, and my answer was, I really struggle with it because Paul the Apostle thought he was at the end of time. And if Paul the Apostle missed it, how... How arrogant of me to think that I would know. However, there are some differences. And the differences are uh, things such as, and this person looked it up in the scripture, uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse number 4. In fact, you can flip to Daniel chapter 12, uh, verse number 4. Uh, and actually, I took some time to just read that entire chapter, and it's caused me to want to do some more study uh, of this passage. But in, uh, now if I can find it, Ruth Ann, you might have to read it because I'm, oh, I found it. There you go. Uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse number four, and it says, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal this book until the time of the end. So you shut up this book till the time of the end. Many shall run uh, to and fro and knowledge shall increase. And I was telling my friend that one of the reasons why I continually think that we have to be close to the end is the increase of knowledge. Folks, if you look at human history, the last hundred years, knowledge has vastly increased. But if you just look at the last 50 years or even the last 10 years, folks, the acceleration of technology and, and knowledge and information is like, my, my grandparents, if they would come back today and see what we see today, they'd be like, this isn't even the same earth. Um, and so it's scriptures like this that I think we have to be close. Bob, I don't know where I'm going with this, but do you have any thoughts? <laughs> well, it's about knowledge. Your knowledge is doubling every 11 months now, every 10 to 11 months. Knowledge or is, is, doubling. is doubling every 10 to 11 months. And that's decreasing, too, because it's, you know, it's just gotten faster and faster, so it's accelerating. Uh, yeah, we see, and one of the things we've seen, I think, that kind of tells us this is very serious, is Israel's commitment to annihilate Hamas. Now, as we go on further and further, we'll see other countries start taking sides in this and the longer it goes. Uh, if you want to read about it in Ezekiel 
36 and 37 talks about the nations and the children of Israel coming back to the nation, and that has occurred. 38 and 39 talks about uh, the Battle of Armageddon. And if you look, look at Luke 21, it talks about the Battle of Armageddon. And that occurs right at the end of the tribulation. Now, why I say that? Because what appears, and again, this is an opinion, what appears to be happening that there are formations of armies collecting together. And that is a indication of the last times. And what we find, if you go into Ezekiel uh, 38, you'll see that Gog and Magog is the first that talks about there early. Uh, Gog is actually a title for a prince or someone. The land of Magog is the land that uh, the land of the Stenets lived around the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, which is Russia. Russia. So when, when it says Gog and Magog, Gog is a title, uh, uh -huh. and Magog is really the land of Russia. Right. And it says that they will be attacked from the north. If you look on the map, Russia is almost due north of Jerusalem. Uh, just, just for... And uh, go down to verse 5, and, and it says uh, they will be joined with Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya. Uh, Persia is Iran until 1935 was the name changed. And then uh, Ethiopia and Sudan further down, they're like 45% Sunni, which we talk about the Iranians. And, and, and also Sudan's about 70%. So we see these nations collecting, and then it goes on over, and it talks about other nations in there, and uh, 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 let me just, uh, Gomer is actually Eastern Europe, all the way up to the Ukraine and areas in Georgia, and, and countries that used to be part of Russia, uh, and that's in verse 6. And to Garmar is actually Turkey is involved in that. And then... And by the way, so, he's talking about what's in uh, Ezekiel chapter 38. 38. And so when he's saying these verses, he's talking about in Ezekiel 38 uh, or yeah. where he's talking about yeah. these names. Yeah, he's talking about these nations here gathering together. And we see that today. We know these nations, don't we? We know these nations and see them today. But one of the interesting things down in verse 13 of that is talks about Sheba and Dedan and Tarsus. Sheba and Dedan are usually in the Bible quoted together. They're usually together as Saudi Arabia. And then the Tarsus, they believe, is England. And the reason I say that, these nations say to the nations here, are you going to plunder them? Is that what your objectives are? In other words, they question these nations, but it appears they do not do anything about it. In other words, they just... Now, when Israel is attacked, they will be by themselves. There won't be any other country helping them. Some of them will just let it go. Others will be in battle. And if you go to uh, Zechariah, where it talks about uh, during the millennium... It says those nations that attacked Israel, that if they do not come and celebrate the Feast of Tabernacle, that there will be a penalty for them, and God tells them what he's going to do to them. But it mentions those nations actually did that, and also mentions Egypt in there. So you kind of get the idea. There's going to be these nations, the formation of armies that will come up against them. Uh, in Zechariah, you can read... Zechariah 12, I believe it is, you can read what happens. They actually take half of Jerusalem. And by the way, Jerusalem is divided today. It, it is, yeah, and it is divided today. Yeah. It's hard to tell in Jerusalem how it's divided, but the Temple Mount and so on is actually in the Palestine. The, the Muslim, it's under Muslim control. Right. Now, now, and I want to follow, I want to paint the picture to you. So what Bob has just described, which is written in Ezekiel chapter 38, folks, 
you can, if you're watching what's going on, all of that is taking place right now. All those countries that are forming sides, it's happening right now. Now, you're going to say, so Josh, are you saying Ezekiel is taking place right now? I don't know. All I know is it, it appears to be. It appears that they're forming these armies, as it says in Ezekiel 40, or 38, and coming together uh, to plunder this uh, Israel. And I, and I also want to address something else that Bob said uh, <clears throat> about, you know, these kind of being divided and stuff. Folks, we're going to have a lot of division come to our nation. And I think that we thought that we were divided back when Trump was president. I'm just going to tell you, I think there's going to be a lot more division. Uh, and what I see taking place inside our nation right now, as soon as, as, soon as Israel... Uh, starts going in on ground into Gaza, you're going to see a, I, I think you're going to see a twist in the way that the media covers it, and you will really see this push that Israel is terrible, uh, and this fight is going to come for the, for the, the PR of uh, right. what's going on. We have a, a U.S. senator, I think she's a senator right now, that is, um, you know, openly saying that Israel bombed that uh, hospital and still just spewing just all this negative. Just, it's, I'm just telling you, it's go, I think it's going to get worse inside our nation, and we got to be really careful. Yeah, we'll see that clip. There'll become sympathy towards that nation. Now, the, one of the reasons that Israel will not have any support from any other nations, I believe that, I believe that's scriptural. Why? God will take care of them. Yeah. They have the Lord. And, and, yeah, right. and, if, yeah. and if the United States stepped in and took care of it, they wouldn't say it was God. And so it's going to be very evident that God stepped in and did it. Yeah. Yeah. The, there's. Yeah. And, and he's talking about the scripture that says that all the preach, preach this word into all nations. And so this whole work of the translating God's word into every nation in the land, they've almost accomplished it. I will tell you, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not already there in some form or fashion. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we're the only people that have a group, a hold on getting God's word into some of those nations. And so they might say there's 3,000 left or something like that. I wouldn't be surprised if God's not already taken care of it some way. Hey, 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 real quick. This week, and it's only Wednesday, and I've been to two presentations about AI with my work and how it's going to impact my work. And then I sat through a demonstration and had to participate uh, working with AI. That's just this week, three times already. Um, it's happening. And I buy cows, you know. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, I'm mentioning the AI. They tell this story about Russia. <laughs> but, and by the way, that's part of what goes back to that Daniel chapter 12, verse number 4. It, you, this, this whole thing. Go yeah. ahead. In 2018... Russia implemented their system they call perimeter, and it's an AI system. And what it does, it actually monitors the atmosphere and the environment of the Earth. It looks for earthquakes. It looks for rapid temperature changes and so on. And what do you think it's looking for? It's looking for a nuclear attack. Uh, they implemented that in 2018, and uh, right off, it picked up some things. And what it's supposed to do is automatically set up. It's got control of all the uh, warheads, uh, nuclear warheads, to for, uh, defend themselves. And it's supposed to, once that warning goes off, it contacts the command center someplace in Russia there, and it is supposed to give them so many minutes, 15 minutes, to answer the phone and to get back with them. And if it doesn't, the AI has the authority to set off those missiles. And by uh, the way, just so you know, as soon as a missile heads towards the United States, ours already sets so that they will automatically go. It's a lose-lose proposition. Yeah. yeah. And you know, we used to have missile silos. We had something like 54 of them here in the United States. But they were secondary. Uh, if they knew that we were, somebody had fired missiles, 
missiles on us, then we'd fire them back. Well, it didn't hit their missiles. It just both countries got destroyed. So we do have a, I can't tell you what it is, the uh, defense system. Uh, supposedly Russia has the best defense system. It's called the S-400 Triumph. It's a new one. They had the S-300 uh, before that, but it's the S-400, which means it will uh, detect and destroy a missile 400 miles away, and it is the best uh, in the world, they, they say. But it, they, then again, they have several what, uh, defense systems, like I was telling you about uh, Israel. Not only does Israel have the Iron Dome, they have the era and what they call now the, uh, what was the other one, the sling? Uh, oh, the, David sling. Oh, yeah, David sling, sling. yeah. <laughs> it was the magic wand, but they changed the name. But so several of these nations, you know, major nations have these weapon systems, but they're only so good. So. And I'm, again, I not to drive fear, folks, if you're a child of God, praise God. Amen? Amen. But I also say, I, I, again, I told you, I, I'm, I just tore between this. How much do we talk about it compared to not? I think I need to keep it in front of you occasionally a little bit, some, so that you're aware. I would tell you this as well. Folks, I don't want you all to... I think you need to make sure that you're prepared for bad things to happen. And whenever I say that, I don't, you need to do whatever it means to you. Um, but I would highly encourage everybody to be prepared uh, if electricity goes out for a month and you don't have electricity for a month, what are you going to do? I'd have a plan uh, for that. And um, again, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but it is, it's possible. Bad weather could cause that. It's, and so... It's just smart to have something planned with you and your family about, yeah. hey, if something happened, here's what you do. But I've told our boys, hey, if something ever happened, this is what you do. Yeah, we do know there are wars during this time. At the end time, after the 1,000 years, if you go to Revelation 20, you'll see after the 1,000 years of the millennium, uh, Satan is released and he uh, deceives. Satan's objective is to deceive nations. If you read about Satan and how he's a, he deceives nations, and he deceives the nations, and they come in and surround Jerusalem, and God takes care of that by sending fire down to consume them. I, you know, I would say there wasn't a shot fired. <laughs> now, in this one here, the one at the end of the tribulation that was the second coming of Christ is quite differently. It's quite different, and so, uh, and it is scriptural too, and it is described in is. Ezekiel 38 and 39, uh, Revelation 16, starting with verse 16. There's not much concerning the Battle of Armageddon in uh, Revelation, but starting with verse 16, um, Luke 21, and uh, then you can go to Daniel and things. But they are described there about these different events and so on. So it's scriptural. Now, whether what we're seeing today is part of that scripture or not, we don't know. But it sure has a resemblance of... <laughs> We, we can for sure say it looks like it. Whether or not it's going to be a thousand years or, or uh, in two months, we don't know. But I do know this. Everything that we see going on, it looks like it according to Scripture. This is exactly what, the way it's going to play out. And Scripture also says that we are not to be ignorant. We're not to be caught off guard by what's going on. That you should see the, the fig tree preparing fruit, you know, and it tells us that. So... Bob, we're going to have to move on, or we're going to get into, uh, we're going to, not going to get through our lesson. Pretty I was good. going to do all of De Deuteronomy chapter 1. We're not going to oh, make uh, it. <laughs> hey, we're moving into De De Deuteronomy so that Wayne won't complain anymore about being in Numbers. Uh, so um, we finished Numbers last week, and now we're going to get into Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is a, is a great book. Uh, and, in fact, it starts off... Um, I don't know. How would you set the stage for this, this book, Brother Bob? What? Well, it's, it happens in one location, and it's quite different than what we have been studying, the different events. This is Moses telling the second generation and teaching them not only the law, 
but he's also their relationship with God, and he's describing different events that took place. And so it's, and he does this within uh, a few weeks. Uh, it's, uh, so picture uh, an old man just sharing his life story, kind of. But it's really yeah. the last 40 years. But he's just, he's just sharing. So in your mind, uh, that's kind of the picture. You're sitting around, and, and there's just this wise old man that's just going to just kind of pour out some knowledge. That's what's taking place in the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, it's not a boring book. It's Moses giving some really, really good information. And he assumes that you have been through the first four books of the Bible. <laughs> and you have. And you have. <laughs> Everyone has been with us. So let's read uh, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 1, verse number 1. These are the words, the words which Moses spoke to all Israel on this side of the Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain opposite Suf between Paran, Tophel, Laban, Hezeroth, and Dishab. Great job. <laughs> Remember that uh, at this point, Bob, uh, they had, so uh, they have moved, where's the Jordan? Oh, here's the Jordan River uh, right up here. Right here. Uh, yeah. And this is the Dead Sea. And they came down here, and then they circled around, and they've encamped on this side of the Jordan, just waiting to, to cross the Jordan. Now, Moses is not going to get to go uh, over to Canaan, and so he's still on the other side of the Jordan River, and he sets down to have this. In fact, exactly what Bob said is what it says at the very start there, that Moses spoke to the children of his. And in fact, notice that little word, all. He talked to all of them. said, hey, let me, let me just, before we take this next step, going to do a recap for you all right and this would be the second generation all of the uh men that were 20 years and older that uh, could go to war they have died Six hundred three thousand five hundred and forty eight. and only two left with caleb and joshua and they have died by this time and if we jumped over to the next chapter there we'd see they there have been out here for 38 years uh since they left uh, Mount Sinai, so we see them here, and this is also known as known as the Plain of Moab. So, so let's read verses two through four. And, and by the oh, way, wait. Deuteronomy means these are the words in Hebrew. Ah, there you go. Now, Deuteronomy of, means these are the words. Yeah. Ah. Some will, in the Greek text they'll say it's the second law, but there was no second law. It was the first law taught to the second generation. It's the same law talked to the second generation. All right, uh, all right let's read verses two, th two, th two through four. It is 11 days' journey from Horeb by way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. Now it came to pass in the 40th year, in the 11th month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spoke to the children of Israel according to all that the, all that the Lord had given him as commandments to them. After he had killed Sion, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon, and Og, king of Basham, who dwelt at Ashtaroth in Edri. I'm glad you're reading, sister. <laughs> you got a headache. You got a headache? <laughs> <laughs> All right. In fact, my notes right here, it just says Bob, because this is really interesting, something that takes place here. Did anybody know something really funny that kind of is said right here? Anybody pick up on it? Go ahead, Bob. Tell them what's really kind of funny and interesting. Well, it only took them 11 days to go from Mount Sinai, Horeb is Mount Sinai, to Kadesh Barnea. And Kadesh Barnea is where they sent the spies out. And they end up from that time on spending 38 years out there uh, when it was only an 11-day journey to get to that. At this time... So, so, so wait, I want to be really clear what he said. It was an 11-day journey that took them 40 years or 38 years to get through. Yeah, they wandered around that area there. Uh, we, you know, when we went through and looked at, we believe that actually Mount Sinai where yep. it was over in Midian. If you look at these maps in the back of your book, it'll say here, and then it might say, this is an alternate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we really believe it was here. And they went up to Kadesh Barnea, 
which would have been about 200 miles. Uh, the Bible standard is 20 miles a day, so it would have been 220 miles for 11-day journey. But So somewhere around 200 miles to get there, and they sent out the spies, and then they wander in that area, Kadesh Barnea area, for 38 years. Uh, do that. And, and by the way, what caused them to wander for 38 years? Unbelief. Sin. The sin of unbelief. Not trusting God. And um, I just think that, I think that that picture is, is something that all of us need to grasp. That so many Christians, once you're saved, you've got this journey that you're going on. How many of us spend time just wandering around? Like we're out in the wilderness, when God has called you to a place, he's called you to a mission, he's called you to a work, he's like, I want to give you this, I've promised you this, this is where I want you to go, I have a gift for you, but because of your unbelief or because of sin, you wander around in the wilderness. Should have been an 11 day journey, you spend 38 years just wandering around. And this is in uh, Deuteronomy 2.14, let me read this one to you. Deuteronomy 2.14. And the time we took to come from Kadesh Barnea until we crossed over the Valley of Zerd was 38 years. That valley is right here below the Dead Sea. So it took them 38 years to get to that point until all the generation of the men of war was consumed from the midst of the camp just as the Lord had sworn to them. Folks, that's sad. It really is sad. Because at the end of the, uh, at that journey, whenever they sent out the spies, folks, if those 12 spies would have come back and said, hey, they're big, but it's just like God said. And if they would have went forward, the whole story changes. It does. It's, a, it's amazing what would have happened if they would have just believed God then. They left Mount Sinai, Scripture tells us on the, uh, 20th day of the second month of the second year. Go ahead and walk through what you've got up okay. there, Brother Bob. Yeah, this Exodus 12 here started. God told him he was going to give him a new beginning, and he started off that. And that happened to be six months. The religious calendar happened to be six months off of the civil calendar. So the seventh month of the civil became the first month. And this is uh, Nisan, or Abib, uh, the first day. On the 10th day, is where they selected the very first Passover lamb. And the 10th day of Nisan is always the first day of preparation for the Passover. 14th day is the Passover. The 15th day is the first day of the week of unleavened bread. And that is the day they started the Exodus, the 15th day. They arrived at Mount Sinai in the third month it says on the same day of the same year. But I believe that means they one day journey from Rephraim, Rephidim uh, to there. Because it says on the same day. On the same day, yeah. Yeah. But they left Mount Sinai on the, the 20th day of the, of second, the second year. So second, from, well, from year. here to here, it was two years. Uh, and on the second month and the 20th day of the second year, they, they left here. Right. So this would have been, you know, like us, January and then February the next year. But it's, it doesn't match up like that. Uh, Nissan starts in March to April, depending on each year, because it's a lunar calendar. So it varies quite a bit. Uh, and then here we are right here, because this tells us here, this is the first day of the 11th month of the 40th year. So between here and here should have been an 11-day journey. And then if we read in Joshua, they crossed the Jordan River on the 10th day of Nisan, which is the day of preparation of the 44th year. So they have been from here is when they left. This is when they crossed the Jordan River. Uh, they're five days for being exactly 40 years. Now, why five days? This is a day of preparation 
they were preparing for Passover. He crossed them over the Jordan. They went to Gilgal, which is next to Jericho, and had to have Passover on the 14th. So that they could have Passover on the other side of the Jordan. That's right. And so they crossed over five days before that so they could prepare for the Passover. Yeah, Scripture says that they came up out of the Jordan on the first day of the, on the 10th day of the first month on the 40th year. Folks, we've walked through how precise God has been with the days and the times that happen in, in God's calendar. Uh, and it traces all the way perfectly to the, to the death of Christ. And we've walked through that numerous times in here in a Bible study. And that's why I say, folks, whatever's going on in our world, it's it at the exact time that God wants it. His, his precision is still as precise as it was back then. Yeah. A billion years. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer that creation is, is 24-hour periods of time. I think the scripture is real clear on that. But you're right. Yes. These are so precise. How could they mess that up? Uh, anything else on those verses there, Brother Bob? Well, this day here is when they cross the Jordan is in uh, Joshua 4.19. If you want any reference on that. Uh, uh, that's Let's read verses 5 through 8. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. There you go. On this side of the Jordan, in the land of Moab, Moses began to explain the law, saying, The Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb, saying, You have dwelt long enough at this mountain. Turn and take your journey and go to the mountains of the Amorites, to all the neighboring places in the plain, in the mountains and in the lowland, in the south and on the sea coast, to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon, so far as the great river, river Euphrates. See, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them and their descendants after them. Hey, by the way, it was not given to the Palestinians. It wasn't. It was given to the children of Israel. Um, I want to point out something here in verse number 6. Now remember this picture. You've got Moses. Now I want you to picture Moses because how old is Moses at this time? He's 120, 120 years old. 120 years He's been wandering out in the wilderness, probably not uh, shaved. He's, he's, a, he's a wise old man. And in verse number 6, as I was thinking about him sitting here, starting this dialogue of pouring his heart out, I just wonder about these words that he says, the Lord our God. And then he said, spoke to us. You know, Just I mean, wonder about the wisdom that those people were about to hear as he says. And I wonder what went through his own mind as he is thinking back and recapping this story. And he starts with these words. The Lord our God. He said that over 250 times. in service. He said what? Said that over 250 times. He said the Lord our God over 250 times in Scripture. Moses did. The Lord our God. Can you, don't you kind of wish you could have been able to sit there at the feet of Moses to hear him talk? At this ripe old age after all that he had gone through. Because what you're about to hear are true stories that he lived. He lived every one of these. These events, it's not, it's not something that he made up. He lived them out. But it starts with the Lord our God and then spoke to us. I absolutely love that he used the word us. Talk to us. He didn't say, God talked to me and I told you. 
He said, the Lord our God talked to us. I think that is, there's a message just in that, brother. Yeah. Well, it's direct. It shows love. It shows uh, very personable. Um, and he talked directly. See, he wanted to live in their presence. That's what this all the, the whole thing is about God wanting to be with his people, people, his creation. That's what the whole story is about. And he will be. And he will be. <laughs> so, but that's what it's about. And we see here uh, about the Amorites. And there were Amorites up through here that they actually conquered when they went in there and took that plain of Moab uh, away. And it says they had the land all the way to the great river, the river Euphrates. Euphrates. That's over here. And it says go and possess it. But you know what? They didn't. David is the only one that came close to it. David's kingdom went all the way around this way, almost to the river Euphrates and back around. So what they were promised was a much more land than what they currently have. They, they had been promised all this over here right. uh, as well. And they were supposed to take Lebanon, which is to the south. Now, they will eventually get Lebanon and Syria uh, because when you get in the millennium, the Part of the tribes and nations are settled in that area. That area is given to them. But they never really took this part. There, we have no record that Israel ever possessed all the land that it was spoken of inside here. Yeah. There's no, no record of it. So we say that they haven't. Yeah. Or there would have been record of it. But I do want to point this out again, just because everything that's going on in the world. Folks, this is very specific. They said that God gave them that land. I... I I had a conversation with somebody at work the other day, and uh, this person was saying, yeah, you know, that's the Palestinians' land. This is literally, this person tells me this at work, and I was like, oh, really? Where do you get that? And they said, it's always been their land. Uh, <laughs> and Israel took their land from them. I was like, have you ever read the Bible? And, um, and they're like, no. And so I started walking through Scripture about how God had given it to them long before there was even... A per, people called the, I almost said the, I almost said the Philistines, the, Palest, the Palestinians. And so, well, that's actually uh, and this person Palestine, was like, had no idea. They had no clue. That's where the word Palestine came from. It was, uh, from the, Phil, the Philistines. The Philistines, yeah. And it was down in this area. Here's where the Philistines were. Yeah. That's where Gaza is. So, uh, the, that's where the word came from. And that actually didn't occur until uh, after 100 A.D. The word Palestine did not exist until after that. And it was called Palestina. And, and that was in, in uh, 100 what? A.D. 100 A.D. So Israel had already had the land for a much longer time. Anyway, you all yeah. know my and, feelings and, on it. And not only that, the Romans had conquered all that area till about 486 A.D. And then the uh, Ottomans came in and took that. And then the British had it. And in 1917, let me just tell you this. 1917, they had what they call the Belfort uh, Declaration. And British, the Britons had that land. And it turned out to be Winston Churchill, before he was prime minister, in 1922 decided they were going to give all this land, including Jordan. Jordan comes up here across this way. And they were going to give all this land to Israel. And the Palestinians took it. And Winston Churchill took a pen and drew down their map there following the Jordan River. And that's how they ended up that. In, in and that was in 1917? 1917 is when this started. 1922 is when uh, uh, Churchill divided that and said this will be the Transjordan and this will be Israel. And then in 1947, the British gave it over on May 14, 1947, gave it over uh, back to Israel. Israel became a nation in... Uh, in one day, exactly the May way the 14th, scripture said. May 15, 1948. Um, all right. I, I, and I'll also tell you this, that I think scripture is really plain that there is a there's a period of time of the time of the Gentiles. And once that ends, then it goes back to the focus on the Jews. And I actually think that we are really close to the end of the time of the Gentiles. Uh, 
where God will say, all right, now I'm going to turn my focus back on the Jews. And I think that yeah. that's what we're seeing. Yeah, it says the time to take of the place. Gentiles will be fulfilled, and that is at the rapture. And, and Scripture yeah. talks about this being a time of labor pains. It's like labor pains. And I think we're going through the labor pains right now, and they're getting more and more intense. Um, and I think they're going to continue. Please be ready for it. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Did no, I cut you off when you no. right there? Okay. Anybody have any thoughts or questions? We didn't make it through all the chapter one. Surprise. <laughs> it's Wayne's fault. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Thoughts, Wayne? Well, we started numbers in February. February of this year? We started numbers? Was Wayne was wrong. <laughs> I appreciate you you owning up to that, brother. So February, all right, that wasn't too bad for a big book like Numbers. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. Father, Lord God, we come before your holy throne. We're so thankful for your word that you have given to us. An amazing work that you have preserved through time that we can read that gives us accurate account of what has happened in the past and what will happen in the future. And Father, today and this evening, as we've talked about such an array of events and stuff, I, I ask, Father, that we just keep our eyes focused on you. That, Father, that your word says for us to look up, for our redemption draws nigh. So with all that is going on, let your light shine through us. Let us be prepared to give a, a defense for the faith that we have in times like these. But also let us be counted, let it, let it as look at it as being counted worthy to be alive at this time so that we can be your voice to a dark and dying world. Father, let us not shun that responsibility. Let us live it out for your glory. Oh, Father, may you have your hand upon this church. Guide us into all truth. Let us be led by your Holy Spirit. I ask this in the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen.